Now let's turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to look at a couple of verses, verse 9 and 10. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. The title of the message is, When I am weak, then I am strong. It's from verse 10. When I am weak, then I am strong. The Bible says, Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much for our salvation. Thank you for washing us with your precious blood. Thank you for the church that you have established where we can live together as brethren to praise you, to pray together, and to listen to your word. We ask you, Lord, that you will fill your speaker the preacher with the Holy Ghost, you allow him the liberty and the freedom to preach a word with power and authority so that it will prick our hearts so that we will change inside out so that we can be better soldiers and better Christians for you. Keep, please keep us from devil's attacks. Help us not to think about what's going on outside, but fully focus on your word. We thank you and love you. You just name pray. Amen. Amen. When I am weak, then I am strong. This society is all about being strong. You know, wherever you look at, you know, survival of the fittest, of the strongest. You constantly hear that in order to survive, you need to be strong. In order to succeed, you need to be strong. In order to do anything, you need to be strong. And that's the theme of this world. They say you have to be strong. However, as Christians, the real key to a successful Christian life is realizing that when you're weak, then you're strong. When I am weak, then I am strong. A lot of times, people don't really understand that verse. Like, how can I be strong when I am weak? You have long ways to go as a Christian to understand. Really, what does that even mean? You know, we have you know, a few young men here who likes to work out, right? And then they feel very strong when you could you know, bench press a few hundred pounds, you know? You know, do some curls or whatever you need to do. Even women, you know, like you could bench press like a couple hundred pounds, you know, or do like 50 pound curls with bice, I mean, with, I don't know, barbells, dumbbells, you know, I'm losing all the worst of all the equipments out there. And after those workouts, you feel strong, right? But funny thing is, you're not that strong. If you catch cold that same night, You'll be at home, lying down, you know, sweats all over. You're asking for, you know, what is it, any Advil, cold medicine. It just shows you right away that as human beings, you and I, we're not that strong in the first place. We could make appearance to be strong. You realize many times that when you're weak, you actually rely on someone, right? Especially as a child. When children need something, what do they do? Especially little babies. They cry. 
they try to get you know, parents' attention or anybody's attention because they want food or they need something. As adults, when you are weak, you need someone, especially if you are sick, right? You know, you need someone's help. And you seek someone's help. It's funny, as you grow older, or even you're young, sometimes you realize, you know, how weak your body is. I think I slept wrong the other day. Maybe it was like Friday night. You know, you just, sometimes you sleep wrong, right? You're on your bed and then you're sideways. Somehow your knees get twisted. I don't know how this happened. It never happened to me before. I mean, I wake up yesterday and I can't really put pressure on my knee, my right knee. And I know some people have experienced it. My leg must have been really twisted, you know, when I was sleeping. I don't know if it was falling out of the bed or whatnot, one of the leg. And I tend to feel like, okay, I could just go through this without any issues. But no, you know, you try to put pressure on it, you can't really put pressure. And then you could barely walk. And people who have knee pains, you know, I'm sure you could empathize how hard it is to, you know, walk when you have knee pain. However, when that happened, I realized that, man, how weak am I, right? How weak are you? When after you wake up from your sleep, your body doesn't even function right. It's like, wow. I mean, that's why it's a blessing that each day you actually wake up, you know, all pieces together and healthy. Because if God says it's time, it's time. You might not even open your eyes. You might be opening your eyes somewhere else, right? Depends on whether you're saved or whatnot. However, there's a danger to it. When you are weak, if you don't realize that, you know, in order to make me strong is Lord Jesus Christ, in order for you to be strong is Lord Jesus Christ, in order for you to be filled with, I guess, strongness is Lord Jesus Christ, what happens? You become very, very selfish. Common characteristic of people who are weak or people who are sick is that they only look at themselves. When you are sick, when you are weak, you know, there's good reasons, right? I'm not downplaying any of the sickness out there. But when you're weak, how does your attitude change? How do you behave? How is your relationship with Lord Jesus Christ when you're weak? Because for many, for majority, say you're going through a flu. Say you're going through a bad cold. You start getting annoyed. You start becoming cranky. And you don't really care about people around you. And especially your own family because you're too close, right? Husbands will be cranky towards Wives, wives will be cranky towards husbands, children to parents, parents to children, brothers and sisters towards each other. Why? Because you think that you have a reason to behave that way. You think that you could be cranky, you could be annoying, you could get angry, you could be a burden to others. Why? Because you think that because I'm going through this sickness. But that's very selfish, super selfish. That only tells you that you are not relying on grace of Lord Jesus Christ. You're only being a complainer and murmur. Think about it. When was the last time you were sick? It could have been this week. It could have been past week. It could have been before. Normal you might have been a very joyful person. Normal you might be a happy person. Normal you is always encouraging other person. However, when that sickness came, how did you turn out? Were you the type of person who was opposite? 
Did you start complaining? Did you lose that joy in your face? Did you start being like, oh man, why is my life like this? Were you looking for, I guess, things to complain about more and more? It doesn't give you and me excuse to act like that, act as complainers, act as unhappy person when you and I are going through such a hard time. To regular people out in the world, they might tell you, of course you can complain, of course you can murmur. You know, okay, that's how worldly people think. But as Christian, if you want to get closer to the Lord, if you really want to enjoy your Christian life, when you feel weak, when you know you're weak, you have to rely on the Lord Jesus Christ for strength. We always repeat Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Why is it that you don't apply it in your life? It's not part of your conversation. I looked at myself and I realized that, man, I don't, I mean, when times are good, hey, everything's good. However, if a little bit of things go awry and if a little bit of things go haywire, man, my attitude completely changes. When I should be more thankful, when I should be relying on the Lord more, instead, I become more selfish and I become more of a murmur. Why is that? Right? Of course, one of the solutions is, like I mentioned in the past, each day, whether you're in a good health, whether you're in a bad health, you pray to the Lord when you wake up, Lord, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit today. Filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's, that'll be a great start, right? Then things will actually work out better. However, you concentrate on your pain, you concentrate on your suffering, then that's going to consume you then you cannot have a proper or blessed Christian life. When was last time when you were just blaming circumstances, everything? You know, in my case, I would have, I would have blamed the bed, right? Or pillow, or maybe the air, you know, or maybe my sleep habit. Why did this happen, right? Why can't I walk today? Well, you know, I mean, how come I can't jump today? Why is it hard to drive car today? Then it will have a domino effect. Things that you do on that day, whether you're reading your Bible, whether you're praying, whether you're interacting with some other people, you're going to have a negative effect. However, if I were to be like what the Bible says, like Apostle Paul, you know what? I'm, I realize I'm a really, really weak person. You know, I'm, I'm really, really nothing, right? You know, when I think I'm something, I think God makes me realize that I'm really a nothing. Then I feel like, okay, even this, yeah, whatever the pain comes, I could pray to God, I could rely on the Lord, and I could always find that joy, happiness, and peace that only God can give you. Only a person who's filled with the Spirit can do. When times are tough, discouragement comes along very easily. When people, when you look at, especially Christians, their life, you could see, even though a lot of Christians are saved, they live a life filled with the fleshly desires, they're controlled by the flesh. When your life is controlled by the flesh, when you're weak, you don't feel you're strong. You become weaker, weaker. There's more negative effect. You become weaker, weaker, and weaker. And then what happens? Devil has you in his hand. Yeah, I got you. You aren't going to do anything for God today. I got you. You're no encouragement to other brethren. You're a discouragement. I got you. You're going to die pretty early. The Bible says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Romans 8, 13. I got you. You are not going to do anything for God. 
I think it's, it will be its greatest tragedy when you and I look back at our lives, whether it's you know, at the judgment seat of Christ or even right now, right? While we're alive, which is better? Man, I lived a, such a selfish life. I feel like whenever I go through any kind of trials, whenever I go through any kind of suffering, whenever I go through any kind of difficulties, man, I was a very selfish person. All I did was complain about the situation. All I did was complain about other people. And especially young children, young people, you always complain about your parents, right? Like, I don't have this, I don't have that, you know? Like, Jimmy has all of this toys, right? Jane has all of this, you know, dolls. But I don't have it. But nowadays, they think a lot, their thought process is more advanced. I don't have this car. You're like 12 years old, right? <laughs> You know, I don't have like all these gadgets, right? You know, where's my computer? Where's my, you know, whatever, iPod or anything. I'm like, oh, and you're like eight years old and you're bossing around your parents. Like you go to some stores, and you just point at it. Like your parents are supposed to know what, right? Break your hand, you know, for being a, such a, you know, disobedient child. Right? Then as, as young people, as well as you know, older people, think about it. When things do not go your way, what's the first thing that comes to your head? Like, I am so strong. Why does this happen to me? Right? Especially, you know, man. Like, man, I am, I am a man. I shouldn't be taking this, right? For, I mean, you're driving. I mean, this goes for everybody who drives. They're like, you should be the king or queen of the road, right? No one should ever cut you off. You know, no one should ever annoy you. Like, no one should ever be on your nerve as you're driving. No one should be speeding faster than you, right? Even though they don't even care about you, they're just driving their own. And you feel like, wow, your pride is hurt when those things happen, when no one else really cares. It's just you, right? And you're just, you're like, other people don't really care. And half of the people are already, you know, high, so they really don't care. They don't even know what they're doing as they're driving. Yeah. And when those situations come, they're like, man, I'm a Christian. I'm a safe Christian. I'm going to heaven. How dare they, you know, treat me like this? Like, Lord, destroy them, right? <laughs> you know, Lord, you know, let them get their ticket right now. I mean, where's the higher patrol? But sometimes uh, you need to get your ticket, right? The, the thought process is like completely backwards. What does that show you? It just shows you how selfish you are. It just shows you how weak you are but you don't realize and recognize how weak you are, right? You and I have to constantly remind ourselves. And if you're okay, well, I don't know how well it's going to work, like you're telling your spouse, right? Or your children, like, you're nothing, you're nothing. I mean, maybe it'll work, right? I mean, but sometimes it is needed. I mean, maybe not like in a hurtful way, because sometimes when people do fight, they say hurtful things, like you're nothing, right? Not in a loving way. I mean, you are nothing, right? <laughs> oh man, boy, you're like, you know, like, and they, you know, and as those things go on, you have to recognize that, man, in the sight of an almighty God, I'm truly nothing. I mean, devil could get a hold of me just like that, right? If you're saved, you don't have to worry about burning in hell. But don't be confused, deceived, lied to that you won't be used by the devil. Devil could still use you, right? Then, many times, 
conclusion is that what? You and I, when we don't recognize that we're nothing, we're weak, we're only strong, when we rely on the Lord, then what happens? What happens? We just get used by the devil all the time. Many of you, including myself, if we could go back in time, we'd love to go back in time and change some wrongs to right. Say or erase things that we've said, if we could go back. But that's not possible. You know? There's no time machine. There's no way we're going to go back in time. However, we could learn from our past mistakes. We could learn that, you know what? I was really nothing. I'm just a weak person, right? I mean, I can't even control my emotions. Because many of you, when you get angry, I guarantee you, you say stuff that you're not supposed to say, right? Especially with your loved ones, right? Whether it's your wife, husband, you know, children, mother, father, right? Brother, sister. You just say it. And then little time passes by and then you kind of reflect on it and you feel bad and you say sorry and stuff. You know, I mean, it's good that you own up and say it. However, you shouldn't have said it in the first place. Again, what does that tell you? Your pride and your selfishness has gotten in the way. When servant serves a master, they know that they're at a lower position. They know that they shouldn't talk back, right? And if they know that their master is a good master, they will trust whatever he says, no matter what, even though you may not understand. But for us, you know, our master is Lord Jesus Christ. And when we don't understand, what do we do? Instead of just simply trusting him, instead of just simply following him and believing him, what do we do? We start complaining. We start giving reasons. We start giving excuses. As parent, I know that the thing that you hate to see your children do is giving excuses, right? Especially when you know that they did wrong. You actually seen it. You know, if you tell a kid, hey, don't eat that cookie, right? And then they ate the cookie. And then you ask him, or you, you, hey, who ate the cookie? And they're like, I didn't eat it. Right? Like, I didn't eat it. Maybe you ate it. You know, now this, you know, this, this kids will just tell their parents, maybe you did it, right? I mean, downright, you know, that's how the society is going towards. It's getting worse and worse, going down the toilet if it hasn't already. That's what you are. You know, sometimes you have to apply your mentality, the how you behave, to like a little kid, right? Because you haven't grown as Christians. You're like, okay, I know I've done wrong when I actually reflect on myself. And I know I'm at fault, and I'm weak. But instead, you want to look strong. So against the loved ones, you try to look strong by raising your voice. Right? How often did that happen? Right? When you're in an argument, you want to win the argument by being louder. Right? And they're saying, oh, people with naturally loud voices win arguments better than others. That might be true, because I don't want to hear you anymore, right? Then not just the voice that's getting loud, you know, your emotions get worked up. And you start frowning. You start showing it. Even though maybe in a marriage, right, you know, till death do us part, you're going to love each other no matter what. But you look at the other person like someone that, you know, you don't want to be with or you want to put down. Why does that happen? Why? Because you think you're strong, but you're not. You have to recognize that. Whether you're a husband, whether you're a wife, whether you're children, you know, whether you're brother or sister, you always have to recognize that, you know, I'm weak, I'm nothing. 
without the Lord's grace, without strength in my Savior and, and Lord Jesus Christ, then I am nothing. How many times have you seen Israelites when they came out of Egypt? God bless them when they recognized they were nothing. Many times. However, when they thought they were something, when the pride got in the way, when they became selfish, what happened? They started rebelling against God. When you look at your life, when I behave in a way where, man, I'm strong, I'm stubborn, I'll do what's right. And then you get deceived by the devil that I'm doing this for God, right? I'm making the best point because I'm the closest person to the Lord. I spend five hours in prayer. I read the Bible five hours per day, you know, so I am strong in the Lord. Then what happened? Just like that, you're in a situation where you should be humble and you should be weak. You start acting stupid. You start acting dumb. You start acting out of character, out of Christian character. You're not obeying what the Lord said. It's just that afterwards you have to think about it, right? When it happens, it just happens. However, how many times when you look back, and you still do, I'm not, none, of, none of us are perfect, it still continues. It's just that how many times can you eliminate, right? If you've been acting, you know, full, like, okay, I'm strong, maybe seven out of seven days in a week, start making it like six out of seven, five out of seven, four out of seven. And it starts from you. It starts from your heart. Think about Apostle Paul. I mean, greatest Christian, right? I mean, he had that ailment in his eyes. Ask the Lord thrice. But the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Don't you think he more than you and I had every right to be like complaining, to be selfish when he's doing everything for the Lord? No. Apostle Paul said what? When I am weak, then I am strong. Then what? If you play it backwards, what happened? When I am strong, then I am weak. Think about it. When you start thinking that I am strong, in reality, you're weak. Because you're relying on yourself. That's why it is very, very important, even though you might have heard it many, many times, to realize, because you and I are full of flesh, and we're so proud that we are nothing in the sight of God. More than nothing. Let's go to Isaiah 40, 17. Book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 17. It's a verse, whenever you and I feel like we're something, we should just go to and realize that we're nothing. Because this verse says, literally, we're less than nothing. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, 17, All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Do you, do you know that? Do you realize it now, again, that you are nothing? I mean, literally, you're actually less than nothing. I'm like less than nothing. When you realize you're less than nothing, you realize you're weak. If I need to fight someone in a battle, but I have no strength, I have no equipment, I don't have anything, then in order for me to win the battle, I have to rely on someone. I'm going to rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how your each day, each moment should be. Lord, 
I'm going through, you know, physical ailment. I'm going through financial hardship. I'm going through emotional hardship. I'm going through relationship problem. Lord, I am nothing. I have no solution. I can't solve anything. I'm weak. So I come to you. I rely on you. I only trust you to resolve this situation, resolve this problem. Then you know what happens? You have peace. You get rid of that worry. You get rid of that covetousness. You get rid of that, you know, any complaining, murmuring thoughts. Why? Everything is in the Lord's hand. You know how you and I always say, we want to be in the will of God, right? You know, best way to live a Christian life is living in the perfect will of God. How do you do that? How? You have to have a start. In order to really find the Lord's will, you have to realize that you can't do anything. Whether you breathe, whether you walk, like in my case, or anybody else, you cannot do anything without the Lord. You can't go anywhere without the Lord. You can't think without the Lord. You can't accomplish anything without the Lord. You can't study without the Lord. You can't work without the Lord. You can't do anything right without the Lord. When you realize that, then you'll be strong. Then your life won't be that weak anymore. Why? Because you get strength from the Lord. Then you realize, okay, there was a purpose of me going through all these weak times, difficult times, painful times. You know what? The purpose of those times are what? Or these times are for God to make me realize that I am nothing. I am weak. However, if you don't recognize it right now, if you don't realize it right now, then it's going to continue. You're still going to think that you're strong, and God has to humble you. And God's humbling process gets harder and harder. Best way to humble yourself before God is what? Through preaching, through the word of God, you get right with the Lord, just like that. Worst way? Reject the word of God, reject preaching, and let, and let God chastise you as a loving father. I mean, I don't know about you. Am I gone through some in my life in the past? I would rather get right with the Lord through preaching and through word of God than him actually has to actually make something happen in my life for me to wake up and realize that I am nothing. That's why if you have good health right now, praise the Lord. If you have bad health right now, praise the Lord as well. So that both ways, you realize that I'm weak and I need to trust in the Lord. Just like that, Lord could get rid of tumor, cancer. Just like that, Lord could heal you. And just like that, Lord could maim you, right? Man, if you think, wow, I could bench press 300 pounds, and you're so proud of it, you're telling everybody, you know, and then you're flexing your muscles. You're like, hey, let's go to the gym together, you know. So your point is to not to help people, but to show up. <laughs> then what happens? You know, Lord goes, okay, for two seconds, you have no strength in your arms when that, you know, weight is on top of your chest. I mean, what do you think is going to happen? You might die, or you might just get really, really hurt. Then you realize, wow, I'm really, really nothing. I mean, I can't even control my body. I mean, I think I can, but I really can't. Then you get to recognize them more and more. Wow, Lord, uh, there was a purpose. There is a purpose why I go through certain things in my life. Again, you know, physical ailments hardships of any kind. I go through it. Why? So that I can recognize and realize that I am nothing besides from you. Then with that, you could rely on God's power. You, you could rely on Lord's power. Think about it. You know, Lord, I can't do this. 
you know. But of course, again, you got a little balanced life. You do your best, right? But Lord, I can't accomplish anything. I want you to fight for me. I want you to be in control. I want the spirit feel life. Then what happens? That don't you think God's power will defeat anything, right? Even when you're going through the hardest and the hardest of the hardest times, don't you think God's power will give you comfort, will give you strength, will give you encouragement, and will help you get through any of the worst situations that you could imagine? How's that going to happen? Like the Bible says, for when I am weak, when you know it in your heart that when I am weak, then I am strong. Let's pray. Dear Father, too many days, too many times, we get so proud and we think that we know everything. We think that we're stronger than anybody. We think that we can do something without you, Lord. And when the trials do come, sometimes it takes too long for us to recognize that we're nothing, Lord, less than nothing. Just like Apostle Paul, Lord God, help us to realize that when we're weak, then we're strong. Help us to recognize that we cannot do anything and accomplish anything without us relying on you. Not 10%, 30%, 50%, 90%, but relying on you 100%. Lord God, help us to live a life where we're weak, but you're strong, Lord God. We pray for our brethren who's going through tough trials in life, Lord. We pray for Pastor Shrive, recovery and full recovery. And our brothers and sisters recovering from surgeries or going through financial hardships, emotional hardships, family issues. I pray that everyone, all of us, will recognize that we're nothing. We can't do anything but just with faith, just trusting you to resolve everything so that we could be in your will, so that we could really live a filled spirit-filled Christian life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone.